Okay, friends, so on today's show, we're going to take a look at how to find volumes of solids of revolution, uh, but we're going to find volumes of solids of revolution by these things called cylindrical shells. And cylindrical shells are just glorified toilet paper rolls. That's our idea. See, here, the, the question on the, on the table is, what if the slices are parallel to the axis of rotation? What if the slices we take are parallel to the, to the axis of rotation? And the, the reason that that matters, see, yesterday, when we took a look at the disks and the washers, our slices were always perpendicular to the axis of rotation. But what if we go parallel? So here's some function, y equals f of x on some interval from A to B. And let's pretend that we want to revolve that about the y-axis. If we want to revolve it about the y-axis, well, see, I still want to do a dx integral because I'm comfortable with dx integrals. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a teeny tiny slice, a rectangle, and I'm going to follow that around the axis. And if I do that, what I get is a really thin toilet paper roll. I get a paper towel roll. And if I do that here and here and here, and I spin all of those around, I get a sequence of nested toilet paper rolls, all one inside another, inside another, inside another, and that together makes up the volume of the solid of revolution we're looking for. So really, what I need to know is, what is the volume of a toilet paper roll? Now, to figure out the volume of a toilet paper roll, you've got to sort of cut it open and unroll it, and you get a really thin rectangular solid. You get a really thin box. How do I find the volume of the box? Well, this dimension appears to be the same as this dimension, this is the function value at some particular point x sub k. This dimension is the same as this dimension. It's the circumference of the toilet paper roll. And to figure out the circumference of the toilet paper roll, we need 2 pi times the radius, the radius of the toilet paper roll. And the radius of the toilet paper roll is whatever special place we're using for an x value. That's awesome. And then the thickness of the toilet paper roll, this thickness is a teeny tiny change in x. So what happens? We approximate with toilet paper rolls, but that doesn't do the job, so we need more rectangles, more toilet paper rolls. We make them thinner and thinner, more and more of them. You know where this process leads. We end up with an integral. This is called volume by cylindrical shells. Volume by cylindrical shells gives us an integral from a to b. The 2 pi x remains a 2 pi x. The f of x remains f of x. And the teeny tiny change in x is a teeny tiny change in x. This is volumes by cylindrical shells about the y-axis. More generally, because it's not always about the y-axis, volume by cylindrical shells is an integral from A to B 
of 2 pi times the radius of the toilet paper roll times the height of the toilet paper roll dx. That's the idea. That's the idea. So, take example 1. I'm going to take the region bounded by y equals x squared on 0 to 1. going to spin it about the y-axis. It's this region going about the y-axis. So we're going to take a cut parallel to the axis of rotation, swing that partner around like Cupid, and you get a toilet paper roll. So the volume by cylindrical shells about the y-axis is an integral from 0 to 1 of 2 pi times the radius of the, the shell times the height of the shell times the thickness of the shell. The radius of the shell, that's easy. That's whatever x value I stopped at. The height, that's easy. That's whatever the function is. And so what have I got? I've got 2 pi x cubed dx. Well, heck, I can pull that off. I know how to work the fundamental theorem of calculus. And sure enough, you get pi over 2. Now note, side note, la, we can verify this using washers. We could decide to take a slice perpendicular to the axis of rotation, spin that sucker around, and get a washer. And in that case, we'd have a volume by washers integral from 0 to 1, because those are the y values in play, of pi times the big radius squared, minus pi times the little radius squared, that's uh, rightmost function minus leftmost function, dy, and that is also pi over 2. So um, just so we're clear, the College Board will always give you problems that can be solved by washers. But that doesn't mean that that's the best way. In fact, I kind of like shells about the y-axis for that kind of a thing. Okay, example two. We're going to take the region bounded by y equals negative x squared plus 4x minus 3 from 1 to 3. I'm going to take this region. I'm going to spin it about the y-axis. I'm going to take a rectangular slice, follow that around, get ourselves a toilet paper roll. To get ourselves a toilet paper roll, we're going to find volume by cylindrical shells about the y-axis. It's going to be an integral from 1 to 3 of 2 pi times the radius times the height times the thickness of the shell. Thickness of the shell is a teeny tiny change in x. So, the radius of the shell goes from the y-axis out to whatever our x value is. The height is the function. And so what have I got? I've got 2 pi, pull it right out of there, times the integral from 1 to 3 of negative x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x dx. And so how does that happen? Well, I take an antiderivative sub, sub, and subtract. So go ahead, we'll sub in the 3, that's negative 81 fourths plus 36 minus 27 tooths. 
And then we're going to sub in the 1, but subtract out that answer. So that's plus 1 fourth, minus 4 thirds, plus 3 tooths. And that ends up to be 16 pi over 3. That's just arithmetic. I offer up as a side note. La, this is very hard to check using washers, because if we slice horizontally, we're going from the parabola to the parabola. So uh, solving for x in terms of y would really give us two different functions, and that, that's just a mess. So nobody wants to do that. This is an easier problem to do using cylindrical shells. So what if the axis of rotation is not the y-axis. Well, same idea. Same idea. What have I got? I'm going to take that same region. This is y equals negative x squared plus 4x minus 3 on 1 to 3. But I'm going to spin it about x equals negative 1. So I'm going to take this slice. I'm going to spin it. It goes actually off the page for us. Somewhere way out there is the other end of the shell. It does go off the page. I want the volume of that toilet paper roll. Well, the volume of that toilet paper roll by cylindrical shells about x equals negative 1 is still an integral from 1 to 3, and it's still an integral of 2 pi radius, height, thickness of the shell. And the height is still the height. But the, thi uh, the radius, rather, the radius takes the x value that's here and says, no, we're going all the way to negative 1. We're not doing the x value. The x value would take us to the y-axis, but no further. We have this extra unit to cover. And so the radius is x plus 1. It's x plus 1. That's the radius of the toilet paper roll. And from there, it's easy. From there, it's easy. We suck out a 2 pi. Uh, this thing in here is an expansion issue. And we take the antiderivative term by term. And we curse the teacher for putting fractions in our problem. And we crank it out, and we get 8 pi. No biggie there. So, generally speaking, height is easy, radius less so. Okay, okay, okay. So, I'm going to do one more. I'm just going to set it up. And then that's going to do it for this. So, here's our region. Um, I want to take the region between y equals 1 and y equals cosine x from 0 to pi over 2. I want to take this region, and I want to spin it about the line x equals pi over 2. And I just want to set up what a cylindrical shell's integral would look like for that case. So think for a moment. Hit the pause button. See if you can set up that integral. What is the volume of that toilet paper roll? Think about it. No, really. Really. I'm not kidding. Think about it. Okay. Now, volume by cylindrical shells about x equals pi over 2 is an integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 2 pi radius height thickness of the shell. 
the height of the shell, that's easy. That's top minus bottom. The radius of the shell, that's a tougher go because this is a generic x value and the, the radius goes from pi over 2 over to that. Pi over 2 over to that. And so if we were setting that integral up, we would set it up as 2 pi radius height thickness of the shell. And it's that kind of stuff that we have to be really, really good at. Uh, we also have to be really, really good just reinforcing at the end of our time, knowing when to use cylindrical shells. When our slice is parallel to our axis of rotation, we use cylindrical shells. When our slice is perpendicular to our axis of rotation, we use tuna cans. Okay? Okay. Awesome. So, um, not only is tomorrow a practice day, the following day is a practice day. So tomorrow night, you're not watching anything or reading anything. You're practicing privately. Uh, and then I'll see you in video land two nights from now.